YouTube, y'all become a why Hollywood wants Cat Williams dead. Let's go ahead and get to the view because I'm not trying to yap my ass off. Let's Cat Williams it. recently spoke out against countless powerful Hollywood figures Touch in the podcast with Shannon Sharp, and they are not happy. Oh yeah, get y'all a drink. I got me an ice piece. So dangerous tea. is that Ugh. tens of millions of people in the whole pack. world believe he is telling the truth. This man is speaking against the evils of this world. Thank you, Cat Williams. This generation is hungry for the truth. Thank you, Cat, for speaking your truth. We absolutely believe you. They canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my piss in front of all my people at my agency. How now, would you react to that? Said that his podcast cannot be proven true or false, but because he is funny, a good storyteller, and most importantly, confident with his words, yeah. this allowed him to convince millions that he's telling the truth. Mm. Plus, we all know that celebrities don't often speak their true thoughts on the industry or politics out of fear of being canceled. However, some things he said are just straight up lies. I know that. I'm reading 3,000 books a year from the time that I'm eight years old to the time that I'm... Wait, so this nigga read, read, read 3,000 books from the eight. From the age of eight to twelve, now, nigga, hold on. By that time, nigga, I'm just, like, he might be telling a truth because listen, listen, listen. Them Dr. Seuss books was not that big, my nigga. He, he probably owned something. He my probably owned something. Used to read the whole encyclopedia set. So when you're like six, seven years old, you read the whole encyclopedia yeah. set. You think you're one of the smartest people in the world. So apparently, Cat read the entire encyclopedia and read eight nonfiction books every single day from age eight. He to might be him. This is impossible. And it's a lie. Throughout this entire podcast, Cat slipped in bold-faced lies, which massively contradicts his preaches of spreading the truth. Nobody knows why liars lie. And that's why I had to come on the program. Mm. Cat exists in this middle ground this where nobody can insane. really determine if he is telling the truth, if he is lying, if he's telling a joke, if he's on drugs, if he has a mental illness, or if he is clearly exposing the dark and sinister nature of Hollywood. So today, I am going to give you a- God damn, nigga got one, two, three, nigga got eight fucking jail picks. <laughs> In the beginning, like th this picture is actually insane. Why, why are these pictures back to back happy as hell? Nigga, what did he do in these pictures, my nigga? What is as much context as possible, so you can make that fuck? decision for yourself. Starting with his earliest introduction to Hollywood on the set Friday. of his very first movie, Friday After Next, yes, where go Kat movie, played go the movie. role of Money Mike. But in the script, Cat alleged that Money Mike was originally supposed to be violently assaulted. The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got in the bathroom. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and all powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully the problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. Indeed. And this comedy involves a yeah. And it's never funny no matter who it happens to yeah. or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting ripped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny. Okay. Ice Cube, who wrote, produced, and it. Okay, before we get into what Ice Cube said, because basically Ice Cube basically said that he didn't necessarily put that in the movie. Like, he said he would never put that in the movie because what the hell. Um, I want to say, um, the reason why a cat is so believable is because, one, this nigga don't never stutter. Like, like, why he was talking, like, he, did he, did he stutter one time? Man, like, he didn't stutter one time. Like, it came out so fluently that I, that, like, you have no choice but to leave, like, what he's saying. Because, like, one, he played the goddamn role, so why would I, like, why would I assume, like, he don't have to come up here and into the interview, like, why, what reason does he have to lie? Like, this shit from, like, back in the day. Like, nobody's asking these type of questions. Man. Acted in the film, denied these allegations. Second thing I want to clear up, it was never, I would never shoot a exactly. scene uh, in a movie, especially, like, Friday. Exactly, that makes sense. Um, where... You actually see this happening on camera. See, see, look, look. He said, "Where you see it, where you see it." So this probably, bro. That's why I'm assuming that Cat was telling the truth, but like, like Ice Cube wouldn't just put it in the damn movie because even in the third, I think it's the third uh, Friday. I think it's like, hey, it's the it's the Christmas one. I forgot which one the shit called, but um, that big, I forgot what nigga name is. That big Tyrone looking motherfucker. He was on some weird shit. He was 
trying to he was trying to clap all the dudes. Let's be for real. So that's why I, I low key believe him in a, a little bit. Like it just makes sense. Style, if you check out any of my movies, they not watch well, the third Friday. It's because Cat said things like this throughout his interview caused fans to cast doubt on anyone who denied his claims. These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That's that a bar. includes blessings for that's his a people. Bar. You know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood like is? They ain't do it. Is to act like it did. Mm. They all do the same job. Cat believes he has a more legitimate and honorable legacy than the other comedians he has been associated with throughout his career. These men, Cat says, have formed a gang in Hollywood that actively steal and or blackball young entertainers' Can we careers, deny that? which drives them into madness. We don't know. For 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. Mm. The way that... Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all of my auditions yeah. is because of Steven said he would tell anybody that listen they got a gang on that side they know what it is they know who the gang is all of these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets and this is the age of truth and 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 the truth doesn't need to be scared of the fact that people tell lies. Mm. Cat only mentions three of these group members by name Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and Ricky Smiley. But you will notice throughout the video, he makes bold accusations about many other massive stars like Kevin Hart and Martin Lawrence. Okay. Are they also a part of the gang? Well, that's up for you to decide. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin. Pause, okay, light skin, hold on, light skin. Weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, okay. okay, light skin, weird face wife. Okay, okay, we got, we got, we got to stand. I'm not, I'm, we're not, we're not gonna speak badly about nobody white. Listen, that's crazy, that's crazy. But we just scanning the put. Damn, they all do got light skin. God damn, <laughs> shit. Damn, he might be on to something. Okay, damn, they all got. Maybe that just, I don't know. Maybe that's just they, they, everybody preference. I don't fucking know. God damn, everybody though, like shit. This guy, like, like most of these people got like multiple wives, don't they? I just just know where like. Anyways, Everybody? let's start with Kat's claims that Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey stole his material. But first, I'm gonna steal your attention for just a minute to tell you about today's sponsor. You smart you ass nigga, hey, shout out to you. Get your money on, on me. I never hate on somebody getting money. Stolen jokes from him. Cedric did it first on the original Kings of Comedy tour in 2000, which at the time was the highest grossing comedy tour in history. Thanks. Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and Bernie Mac playing sold out arenas from coast to coast. The tour grossed over Harvey, $18 Bernie million Mac, dollars in its first year. Boy, in 1999, both Seagram Americas and HBO we sponsored the tour. DL Hewley was added, and the two year gross exceeded $37 million. And at the exact same time of this tour, Cat was just starting to make a name for himself in Hollywood. He thought that I was just a no-name comedian yeah. and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The, the issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. This is the joke that Kat is referring to, which was originally performed in 1998 okay. on BET's Comic View program. You at your radio, well, so yeah. That you couldn't hear the damn thing when it cut off. It looked like this. You flossing in a Using physical comedy, Cat mimics someone trying to assess why their car just broke down while the music is blasting. The alleged theft came from Cedric the Entertainer two years got later on the got original proof. Kings of Comedy tour, which was in 2000. The premise of Cedric's joke was that white people are obsessed with the moon and space. He says black people are not, but if they gotta go to space, then they would drive the spaceship like this. We drive a space shuttle like it's a 72 deuce and a quarter, nigga. We, we, we get us a cigarette, nigga. We, get us, we be in a space shuttle, nigga, like it's a 72 deuce, nigga. Now, when you consider the music cue, which I is guess. just very common in stand-up comedy, that already looks suspicious. Then the side-by-side -side comparison indicates Cedric makes very similar physical movements that okay, Cat did. Okay. Cedric says he did not steal the joke, and that if Cat was so upset about it's it, like he had hit miss. 30 I don't, I don't really know. to speak up. Can't say you stole one of his jokes. Yeah, like, that was ridiculous. You know what I mean? It was like the idea of the joke that he was even talking about. 
it don't even match up with no timeline. So for me, okay. it was one of those things like. Did you have a conversation? Did you guys sell it? Did you have a conversation with Cat? I've seen this guy thirty times. Like dog. So he no. Literally was that. Upset. Like he didn't, he didn't, he did not answer the question. He literally went. He nigga said he, I seen them. He didn't say yes, I smoked. No, uh, like, no, just like, him to me say, hey, yeah, why you say nothing? Like that don't even make sense. The cat says that Cedric apologized about stealing the joke years ago and is now lying to the public that he never stole it in mm. the first place. Him and Steve had already apologized for me, so I gave him a pass. Why would you sit here and be like, I talked to, I saw Cat 30 times. Why would I give you a pass if you were just gonna lie? Mm. So imagine how a young Cat Williams felt seeing his best joke being stolen by one of the biggest tough. Hold on, this bitch is tough as well. Tough 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 we never wrote anything. Remember, when Seth the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called The Entertainer. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Noticing uh, all the backlash, Cedric responded to Kat's comments on Instagram. Revisionist history. Regardless of whatever Kat's opinion, my career can't be reduced to one joke Cat uh -huh. Williams claims as his. Said, see y'all, see, listen, listen. This is why, like, it's the wording these niggas are using that's responding to Kat, bruh. Like, like, basically what he just said, he said, my career can't be reduced to one joke uh, Cat Williams claims as his. So, like, he's not, like, he's not outright saying, no, nigga, the joke is not yours. This nigga is basically saying, regardless if it is yours, my nigga, like, my career cannot be reduced just to that joke. So, nigga, that's what I'm saying, like, it's the, it's how they're responding to this nigga. Cedric like, added, I'm a grown-ass man, and none of that's going to go like you think. Mm -hmm. Cedric isn't the only one that stole Cat's like material. 60, Steve Harvey's theft of Cat's jokes is arguably much worse. Okay. At the 2005 BET Comedy Awards, Steve Harvey introduced a hot upcoming comedian to the stage by the name of Cat Williams. Oh, word? Cat hit the stage and absolutely dominated the crowd with shout his out, about out. gas prices. Because the world is crazy right now. What is gas? Six hundred dollars a damn gallon right now. Damn. I don't care how That's much like money today. Like gas is entirely too hot. Used to be, if you put fifteen dollars in your tank, you had time to bond with your vehicle. Oh, you yeah. had time to put the nozzle in and set the clicker and look through your car and clean off the dashboard. Then Steve Harvey did a joke about gas prices three years later in his comedy special, Still Trippin'. Okay, let's see. Can't even pump gas like you used to no more. Fuck. I ain't gonna cap. Nigga only said one sentence. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's already looking terrible because my nigga, what the? Okay, maybe. I don't know. Okay, listen, listen. I'm a young nigga, so I don't know how, co like, comedian, um, like, I don't know what to call it. Like, I don't know how comedians work. I don't know how stand up works. So, like, can you take inspiration? I don't fucking know. Nah, like, he just kind of stole his shit. Hold on. Let's keep going. Oh, God, a gallon. You remember when you used to go to the pump and put the nozzle in there and hit it? Be sitting there talking, be on your phone. Hey, nah, you saw that shit. Nah, nah, nah. You saw that shit. Nah, nah. Nah, he saw that shit. Nah, nah, nah. He saw that shit. Nah, nah, he saw that shit. Nah, nah, nah. 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 He saw that shit. Yeah. Now there has been an infamous beef like between that. Steve Harvey like and the late Bernie Mac that fans have known about for years. Mm. There were often arguments between the four comedians of who should be the closer or finale of the tour. Since Bernie was a much funnier comedian, Steve would get booed by the crowd when he was after Bernie. Why? Because the whole time Bernie was here, you was acting like you was funnier than him. Mm. The reason you was supposed to go last is because it was your tour. Tell the truth. It was Steve's tour. Mm. Not even gonna be called the King's Comedy, it was Steve's tour. These are the guys opening for him. Of course you gotta close if it's your tour. Harvey eventually just ended up being the host of the tour and not performing a full stand-up routine what? because he just couldn't make the audience laugh as hard as Bernie. Mm. D.L. Hewley, who was also on the tour, right even said that Steve boy, never thought to Bernie would become successful and when he started getting more opportunities, he became jealous. You feel that the beef between Bernie Mac and Steve Harvey was because Steve Harvey was getting a lot of network love during the time, and Bernie Mac not so much. Yeah, and then Bernie started to get it. So, yeah, mm. I think, that, you know, Steve at one point was 
you know, uber successful, and then Bernie started to. That he didn't ever think he would get the opportunity. Went on a fucking run. Right. in America, loving like we all kind of knew they would, and he decided to go a different way. Eventually, Bernie got sick of Steve hating, realized his worth, and exited the tour, which ended up forcing all four guys to split up. Okay. We split up. You wish him to stay to kept it together. We could have kept it together. We, a couple. we we tried everything, but you know, dudes felt like they was movie stars. I never saw myself as a movie star. Steve basically claims that Bernie went Hollywood and acted too good for the guys. Mm. And Cat didn't like that. Imagine him coming to tell you another story mm. when he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? You called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. Mm. What do you mean you didn't want to be a- See, hey, bro, I, I'm trying to tell y'all, bro. Shit be so specific. It's like, why would I think this nigga lying? Like, like, bro, like, to even remember that? Like, this nigga took notes, y'all. Like, bro, that nigga was watching Cedric and the Steve um, interview like this. He said, oh, oh this nigga said, what? Let me go ahead and add that to the notes. But I'm trying to tell y'all. So, like, everything this nigga saying, why would I doubt it? Like, it's so, it's so believable. And it's so out, like, out of, out of the range of what I would even think. Like, to say what he just said, like, a Steve called Ocean Eleven to take Bernie Mac's part. Nigga, nobody, nobody thought about that. Like, so it's just like so crazy that these niggas just don't have to come out and show facts, bro. Like, a movie star. Allegedly, they didn't deny Steve it. even called the producers for the heist comedy film Ocean's Eleven to steal the role of Frank Catton from Bernie Mac. Ocean's Eleven mm. featured a star-studded cast, including George Clooney, Matt Damon, Damn. Brad Pitt, Damn. Julia Roberts, and Casey Affleck, Shit. among others. I gotta watch this movie. The film became a huge critical and commercial success, mm. earning over $450 million at the worldwide box office. Having a substantial role in a film of this magnitude helped the rising trajectory of Bernie Mac's shut career. Shut out, shut out, shut out. An infamous GQ article from 2003 released when Bernie Mac himself claimed that Steve was jealous of him from the very beginning. Mm. Overall, Cat is obviously upset about Steve's deal material, but ironically, he was more upset that Harvey tried to lie and claim that Bernie went Hollywood on the Kings of Comedy, when in reality, Steve was so jealous of his success that Bernie couldn't take it anymore and quit. And now that he gone, you gonna act like, he wanted to be a movie star. You stop it. You stop it. That man was funnier than all of y'all, and y'all thought y'all had one over mm. him. The king is the funniest. Period. I respect, I respect the new Cat Williams because, like, um, Bernie Mac is his nigga, and, like, he ain't gonna let, like, somebody, like, put a stain on his legacy. And you got, you got respect to my nigga. Like, but some of y'all wouldn't even do that to y'all best friend, bro. You got respect it. Every time. That's hard. And that's I got why respect. no audience member was ever swayed. Mm. It didn't matter where Bernie went. You think if Bernie went first, he wasn't the king? Mm. Get out. Talk to him. But Cat Talk Williams to him. and Steve Harvey's beef did not stop there. A few years later, in 2008, a show promoter booked Steve Harvey and Cat Williams to co-headline a New Year's Eve stadium show in Detroit. Okay. Cat entered his villain arc and challenged Steve to a comedy battle on the Jimmy Fox radio, radio show, to which Steve accepted. You have been the king of comedy as long as we've had one. The second that you get off stage, I need you to understand that that's your final time. Talk your shit. What? What was supposed to be just a comedy show is now some sort of 1v1 battle dubbed the championship of and comedy. And it should be. He responded with this. I'm not saying he's in trouble, but I'm saying this right here, Jeremy. A dog don't bark at park cars. Basically, Steve's analogy was that he shouldn't respond to Cat Williams okay. because he is too famous and successful. And gets, so on New Year's Eve, ain't gonna lie, that was a hard ass bar. Nigga said a dog don't bark at park car. Nigga, that's the most, bro, bro. People, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Y'all ever heard like, like I don't know, like, like old folks give like the most like stupidest fucking like analogies, bro. Nigga said a dog don't bark at park cars. Nigga, like what the fuck? Like, what's even like? Who if Steve got on the stage and never addressed or made fun of Cat, that was a big mistake. Oh, you should
Tyler C. I know you ain't got iPhones, like, like what is you recording with? Like, you gotta be re like recording with like a Kodak or something. What is you recording with? Maybe like an old iPhone. Cat absolutely embarrassed Steve. Okay. He claims this was the end of Harvey's career. Mm. <laughs> Told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy Talk with him. one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people Indeed. and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. Mm. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Now, Cat isn't very accurate here. Steve had multiple successful arena comedy tours after the championship oh, okay, battle, okay. and Steve was already bald by 2008, so Cat didn't really expose him for having fake hair. But is it a coincidence that almost immediately after Cat got on that stage and exposed his biggest hater in the industry, okay, he started his crazy downward spiral? In November of 2008, Williams missed an appearance on Conan O'Brien and was later arrested. Actually, you technically lying because. Like that, then that shit happened on the thirty first of uh, two thousand eight, right? This is this shit before, so you capping. So like, see, look, look, look I'm gonna call. Look, listen, this is the, the move. Let me move the um, move the shit. That shit say, that shit say December eleventh, right? December eleventh, two thousand eight. Then he just say that shit happened like the um, the championship of comedy, whatever happened on the thirty first of two thousand eight of December. The nigga capping. Hold on, shit. I just moved the whole goddamn. Hold on, hold on. There we go. There we go. Hold on. I just fucked up. Okay, there we go. Hold on. That evening, when officers found Shit. three handguns in his car while exiting rapper Jim Jones's studio in New York, that same month he checked into the Mount Vernon Inn in Sumter, South Carolina. Okay. Shortly after checking in, employees reportedly found Williams stumbling around wearing just a bathrobe and a towel wrapped around his head. When police arrived, Williams asked them for directions to the nearest hospital. There, his family convinced him to seek psychiatric help, what? to which he was eventually hospitalized. He just said that he doesn't trust anyone anymore. That everyone has turned against him. He wasn't really coherent. Pretty much after this, Cat wasn't seen again until 2011. No stand-up performances, no movies, no TV. The only time he was talked about was when he was arrested. In November of 2010, authorities arrested Cat in Coweta County, that Georgia, is weird, after he allegedly stole $3,500 worth of coins and jewelry. Things escalated in June of 2011 when he was arrested in connection with an alleged assault on a tractor driver. He supposedly conspired with three women who attacked the man in his tractor. In 2012, Williams returned to the comedy world with his third HBO comedy special, Catpocalypse. Unfortunately, with the spotlight back on him, Cat fell back into a dangerous cycle as the bizarre behavior continued. In October of 2012, Cat and comedian Faison Love got into a heated argument outside of a Hollywood club over a $50,000 debt. The cat owed love. During the argument, cat proceeded cat. to pull a gun up. If you owe me fifty thousand, shit, I'm on your ass too, my nigga. Nigga, where my money? Nigga, look. See y'all, listen. See, once we get into like, see, hundreds of dollars, I'm not ready to chip over. Thousands, nigga, fifty. Nigga, I'm on your ass, nigga. Where, where's my money? Where, where is my money? Like, nigga, fifty thousand. On love that wasn't loaded. On November 9th, his uh -huh. former assistant, Melissa Shade, yeah. claimed that he went into a rage and attacked her the month prior. Then police arrested Cat in Oakland, California on charges of suspicion of assault with a deadly weapon after he'd allegedly beaten an 18-year-old with a bottle. Damn. On November 16th at the Oracle Arena in California, Cat took the stage while having a total public meltdown. For 15 minutes, he seemed to be under the influence, rambling about nothing while taunting members of the audience. 
Well, give me 20 to get that time I said, I'm gonna call Spuck Boy. But I bet if you can walk to your car, I can show your bitch a dick she'll enjoy. So why don't you take you your keep right. ass on over there, nigga, before I can catch you. Or you can pull your bank out and I'll match you. But you ain't gonna get punched in the face. Then the audience began booing him. What the hell is that? What is that? What is that? The rest smells like Tom Robin. Get the fuck out of here, nigga. I am like afraid to leave. I'm afraid to We know you ain't got no money to see your outfit, nigga. She said, I'm afraid to leave, but I'm also afraid to stay. <laughs> bro, black, bro, black people be so damn nosy, bro. I love my people. Y'all, like said, she said, I'm afraid to leave, but I'm also afraid to stay. She's trying to catch every moment, but she at the same time, she don't know how far this is going to go. Listen, I ain't going to lie, y'all. In this situation, I'm leaving. One, because you don't know how somebody going to react. They could crash out at any moment, like, especially in the streets. Basketball is like one of the craziest, like, you, she could go from... Nigga, I just fucking like spun, fucking like wet that bitch in your mouth, no diddy. Nigga, and, and that nigga go to his car and start immediately busting. Ain't, ain't no way. Mm -mm. You, gotta, you gotta read the room. You gotta read the room. November 17th, 2012, Williams well, I'm not was involved in a police chase while driving his three wheeled motorcycle and failing to stop. Just a week later, Cat was arrested in Seattle, Washington after he allegedly got into a dispute at a bar in the South Lake Union neighborhood. His arrest came after he missed the first night of a planned two night performance at the Paramount Theater. Okay. That same month, he slapped a Damn. Target employee in Sacramento for no apparent reason, which was made fun of on late night television shows What's like the... Conan O'Brien. Uh... On December 28th, Williams was placed in handcuffs once again on child endangerment charges. Oh man, K, you cool, man? How you doing? Oh, I'm cooler than a man. My they took my children from me. Yeah, what? I mean, how terrible is that? Cat's criminal history does not even come close to stopping his hair, but I'm sure you all get the point. He was spiraling hard for years, seemingly strung out on drugs or at least. Is that a fucking tattoo? Is that a thigh? Is that a tattoo, y'all? experiencing manic episodes. The, the media called him crazy, a crackhead, and didn't believe anything he was saying since they wrote him off as a madman, but he says he was never under the influence. I am never under the influence of anything. I'm always in my right mind. I'm always a physical specimen. And when you see me, I'm much, <laughs> much bigger than you had thought. I have far less play in me than you would like. There seems to be a pattern with comedians in the downward spiral. In 1990, Richard Pryor, who struggled with addictions to women and hard drugs, poured high-proof rum on himself and set himself on fire. His widow, Jennifer Lee Pryor, claimed it was a drug-induced attempt at ending everything. In 1997, Martin Lawrence was coming off the end of his hit sitcom, Martin, as well as starring in the blockbuster film Bad Boys. Yeah. That year, Lawrence allegedly had a meltdown in Los Angeles where he ran into Ventura Boulevard with a gun and threatened tourists and random people. Sources claim Martin began taking psychotropic drugs and having violent outbursts on the set of his movie, A Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Martin would continue his erratic behavior, getting arrested for gun possession and later going to rehab. Robin Williams openly spoke about his lifelong battle with addiction, alcoholism, and depression. Wow. Comedian Mark Maron has spoken publicly about having severe depression. Artie Lang and Jim Norton as well. John Belushi, Chris Paul. Damn. So what this goes to show me, I don't know about y'all, but like, money... It's not that, I, I don't think it's money, y'all. Like, people be like, money is like, like, you get money, you cool. I think it's the expectation. Like, to to reach certain heights and then to reach, like, like not the lows of the lows, but just, like, you you started out so high. Like, say, like, a, like a Will Smith. But Will Smith was on a insane run. Nigga, I rolled by. Like, this nigga had so many movies that are class to me classics but like to just go from like the top of the top to just go from like lows that you ain't never seen before it's like it would do something to you so like say like a streamer like costing that hope hopefully this never happens but kai has three hundred thousand people watching and then just to go from three thousand to five hundred a thousand two thousand whatever whatever like consistently a thousand two thousand would do something to your mind because it's like 
but I'm known for getting all these clips. People love me. People like, like so it, that would do something to your mind, and then to indulge into negative habits like drinking, smoking, and uh, like mess with a bunch of women and that don't really love you, that just care about your bag. That would do something to your mind. So I understand where these people coming from. So what what I want to preach is just y'all like whatever you doing, bro. Make sure you taking time out for yourself to. Write down your journey. Get your thoughts out. Go to therapy. A lot of people don't want to go to therapy. Listen, go to therapy. We all need it, bro. Farley and Greg Giraldo all died of drug overdoses. Damn. It's unclear why comedians seem to struggle with mental health more than others in the entertainment industry while being tasked with creating the most lighthearted content. Deborah Sarani, a clinical psychologist yeah. who treats performers with depression and other mental health problems, said comedians often wear what we call the mask of depression, wow. which helps them put on a more acceptable face to the world. But behind that mask, there is a terrible struggle going on. Mm. There is a stigma about depression, and oftentimes the laughter distracts from feelings of weakness. Cat Williams has had an extremely rough life, Damn. starting with being homeless and alone at age 13. Combine that with the chaotic lifestyle of a comedian, constantly being on the road, late nights, irregular sleeping and eating yeah. schedules, the pressure to constantly deliver funny and engaging performances, as well as regularly dealing with hecklers and sometimes unresponsive audiences exactly. who make the job mentally taxing. Yeah. And on top of all of that, add the potentially evil Hollywood gang that Cat says is actively trying to get him to compromise his morals. But when he he refuses, they blackball him and run smear campaigns to call him crazy. That is a recipe that would make any man go mad. Yeah. So the question is, was Cat trying to escape an evil industry or was he actually what a- What type of fucking chain is that? This shit like fucking, uh, cheese grits. What the hell is that? Drug-induced madman. Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Cat, when I come back, I need you. You're my young partner. You're my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. Go do what you got to do. When you come back, I'm in your movie. Don't trip. I don't need to see the script or nothing. You know, we get in that office and this fool pull out Big Mama's house, too, mm -hmm. where this nigga want me to get in a dress with him. And I'm literally saying to everybody, why is he in a dress again? If it isn't obvious, Kat didn't want to wear the dress. Brandon T. Jackson would go on to portray Martin's son, Trent, in Big Mama's House, where the two go undercover at an all-girls performing arts school. Unfortunately, years Bro, later, Jackson- This is actually kind of crazy, because I, I, I remember watching this movie growing up. Um, my grandma loved this damn movie. She loved the first one in this, in this one. Um, to see this is low-key crazy. Like, as an adult, like, what the hell? <laughs> but like I don't know this shit's crazy like like this movie was tough though. I ain't gonna lie like, I, well, I ain't watching a long ass time but when I was a kid it was tough and asserted that he did the project for money and was unaware of the repercussions it would have on his career did you get like slack when you wore the dress at that moment only Cat Williams Cat Williams was trying to always say Brand Brandon don't wear a dress. <laughs> that shit pretty good. He's you, or is this... No, he was saying in the media, so I thought he was heckling me. He was really trying to help me at yeah. the time. I didn't know that. I was immature. Right. I feel like, dang, why? I'm trying to, uh, trying to make it. And then he was trying to warn me, you know, don't get in the dress. Everything went wrong. He's like, everything went right. Everything went wrong when I put on that dress. What? Kat has been discussing this subject for years. See, because like, this has I'm been just saying. That many have speculated. Like, everything coming back to show you. This nigga might not be lying. Like, is a humiliation ritual. Eddie Murphy, oh, Tyler Perry, shit. Jamie Foxx. Wait, what? hold on, nigga. That's Eddie Murphy. Wait a minute. I, I might just learn something, y'all. Like, y'all might be thinking I'm playing. What's what's that? Wait, what's the lady from um Norbit? Um, Eddie Murphy dress. Everything went wrong. He's like everything went right. Everything went wrong when I put on that dress. Cat has been hold on, hold on. discussing the subject for years because this has been a pattern on, that many have speculated is a humiliation ritual. Eddie Murphy. But there's no way this Eddie Murphy. There's no way. Who is this? This, 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 who this is? This might be Eddie Murphy. Come look at the damn nose. Yo, dead ass. I gotta rewatch this movie. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. Y'all, 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 please let me know if this, if this lady's Eddie Murphy. Yo, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. Y'all, this, this movie was a classic to me growing up. There's no way this Eddie Murphy. There's no way. There's no way. There's no. I, I'm, there's no way. I'm in disbelief for this. I'm looking at it though. Low key, like I don't know, y'all. I don't know. Is it? Is it really? 
B, Tyler Perry, Jamie Foxx, Wesley Snipes, Chris Tucker, Arsenio Hall, oh Tracy God. Morgan, the Waynes brothers have all dressed up as women for TV or movie roles. Just before Kevin Hart exploded into fame, he also wore a dress on Saturday Night Live. And even 10 years ago, Kat discussed this. It is two answers. First of all, let's be very, very clear. It is possible that there isn't anything funnier than a guy in a dress. And if that's the case, then it might also be said that there's nothing funnier than a black guy in a dress. Okay, well, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. So now <laughs> some of us are against the Illuminati and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. I don't know why you speaking though. If people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them. Nobody likes them. Yeah, yeah. Kat also detailed an Illuminati meeting alongside the lines up with those. There was a lot of shows where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing yeah. and decisions had to be made. So it was both of us, we were equal. One of us had to cut off all the hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him $10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. It's really hard to back up any of Kat's claims. And even True. if the stipulation of getting a $200 million deal is that you have to shave your head inside. And then this nigga Ludacris gonna respond with a damn rap. Nigga, I ain't never been Illuminati, only Ludacris. <laughs> Lisa, I ain't never been Illuminati, only Ludacris. Luda, Luda that seems like an extremely small compromise. And what there the are no the indications that Luda Luda what is this? Told. I mean, he will tell you. He responded to Kat with a rap song. Been Illuminati, only oh, Illuminati, <laughs> and I only left with bitches when coming from any party. Afro with the sideburn, yeah, that's my signature. Addictions on the rise, comedians check your temperature. Perhaps the most overlooked comment during the interview was Cassie Illuminati. West. I suspect that we're pretty awful people if we say that somebody got a mental illness, yeah, and then we watch what they do. Mmm, pussy too. If you say somebody got special needs, yeah, yeah. then why would you be watching them and holding them accountable mm. like everybody else? The question of That's whether true. someone's actions Kanye, should be yep. judged differently due to mental illness is exactly. complex and multifaceted, and opinions may vary depending on cultural, ethical, and legal perspectives. Mental illness can significantly impact an individual's ability to understand the consequences of their actions, to make rational decisions, or to control their behavior. Yeah. Kat is not excusing Kanye's behavior, no. and he definitely says he doesn't agree with well, what he says, but he's just standard. questioning why people are surprised as his whole career he gave obvious signs, such as mm -hmm. claiming that he was a god, and he was praised and uplifted for his outlandish Dang. behavior. Now, Kat has never publicly disclosed any sort of manic or psychiatric problems, but look at how much the world judged him when he was crazy 10 years ago. Versus now, he is saying the exact same things he was saying while he was crazy, but today he is more calm, coherent, and of course, entertaining. Now they are quoting his words as prophetic statements of a wise old genius. Funny how things change. Mmm. Fucking bar, hold on, shout out to my, what the fuck? What the hell? I'm just gonna hurry up the, the outro because that shit is fucking disgusting. Anyway, um, y'all let, let me know y'all thoughts and opinions down below. Hey man, I think Cat Williams, I feel like, I think he's, I, don't, I ain't gonna say he's telling the whole truth, but I do feel like he's telling majority of the truth. Because look, people came out and was like, yo, yes, bro, he tried to warn me, yes, this happened, yes. And like a lot of people, they did speak about it, they didn't deny what he said. But hey, y'all let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. I love y'all. Stay safe and I'll see y'all next video. We out. Ugh.